Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And this is going to be a message that's going to probably take several different messages to truly, fully bring out this information about the planned New World Order. Uh, I just happened to run across this article, Israel, the planned home of the New World Order. I thought it was kind of very relevant in this disclosure series that I'm going to be doing most of which will be on Patreon. The reason why this message here is on iConnectFX.com is because it is giving you the overview of the information and also making sure that you have that information as well. Uh, but on Patreon, I do go deeper into disclosure information, things that a lot of people mock, uh, when you try to share with them the intel that you are privy to. And um, so that's why we do that over on Patreon and not just put everything out here to the public. But when it's something that I think is very critical and vital for um, humanity, especially for the Christian population around the world, I like to share that where everyone has that opportunity. Uh, although Patreon is only a dollar a month, it's not a, it's not like it's something that's going to break the bank for anybody to start with, but it does kind of condense down the people that listen and uh, and the folks over there they appreciate that information. We're getting into this so very deeply biblically because I know the government is going to begin to disclose. Uh, well, they've already started disclosing it indirectly even now uh, through media, through military, military releasing things to the media that our government has been working with the extraterrestrials. That hint has already been dropped out. I know that there is talk about whether or not they're going to disclose uh, that the moon is not organic, uh, that our moon is actually something that was brought in by the extraterrestrials some time back. I know David Icke has talked about that before himself, uh, but I know this directly from sources inside the Pentagon that they know that as well. Uh, they know about the presence of uh, demonic uh, beings, I should say. And, and really, when I use the word aliens, always remember, that's fallen angels. These are Satan's demons that have just taken on bodily forms uh, through their manipulation um, uh, of the resources that they have in this universe. So that's really what it comes down to the end of the day. And that's why I want to, I want to really share with you from a biblical standpoint, the things that are about to take place on the earth, including all these tensions that you see that are going on, uh, like in the case with Russia and England, uh, you know, Putin says Russia could have sunk the UK warship without starting World War III. Uh, you know, well, he's right because World War III is a planned event for 2024. Uh, we also are seeing, too, like in Yahoo News, Russia and China are coordinating a military exercise to threaten not only Taiwan, but also Hawaii, according to senior Japanese defense official. Again, all these all these world leaders are are only controlled by the elite. And the elite, by the way, friends, are your Rothschild families. Under the Rothschilds, you have like Soros, Kissinger, uh, those type leaders there. And if you ever notice, they go and they visit these other world leaders as well, such as Putin, etc., cetera, uh, right down the line. They are controlled. We have officially within the government what we call seven layers of or, or seven positions. Normally, your level three uh, is people like the president of the United States, he would be considered a level three. Level four and five would be people like Soros and Kissinger. You get to level six and seven, you're dealing with the Rothschild families that are and those families like themselves that control the entire global wealth and finance of the world. Names that you've never even heard before um, that control global governance. But then we have three other levels that no one, not even those in the Pentagon, talk about. That's going up from levels 8 to 10, and these are interdimensional beings. They are people that are able to look human, but really are not human. They are part of the fallen angels that are really gaining power on this earth. And the only reason, in my opinion, they've gained the power is because, like the book of Revelation says, 
that power was given unto the beast. Yeah, people forget that Jesus gave you power to tread upon the heads of scorpions and serpents. Remember that? Remember how the scripture even says, you shall take up a serpent and it shall not harm you. You can drink a deadly drink and it won't kill you. Oh yeah, Jesus gave you that power, but he wasn't talking about the rattlesnake out in the bush. He was talking about these fallen angels, these reptilians and these, uh, uh, oh gosh, there's, there's so many different names given to these different uh, fallen beings that are that, that inhabit the universe and our planet and other planets as well. Uh, that's not even funny. And I'm going to be sharing a lot of that information over on Patreon, mainly because we have to have some platform where we can disclose this information uh, to where people can be aware of it. Does it do you any good? I don't know. But uh, it's certainly interesting information. And I know that the government's going to be disclosing more and more a lot of this, but I can take you into a depth uh, that's, that's really, really deep with all this. I want to start with you, though, today, though, with, uh, well, before I actually go to Matthew, let's go to 2 Corinthians. And this is just something very important for, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no marvel. For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also trans, uh, be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And I wanted to start with this here, because even in the disclosure information that I'm sharing over on Patreon, I'll be talking about some of the, the things that we know that these devils are able to do, even like in the case of the reptilians. They can literally transform themselves to look human. Uh, they have the ability to look any way they want to. They can, if they want to look like Jesus and come to you, they can do so. Uh, I bring this out as well because I know, especially if you go back to the time when the, when the UFO and alien phenomena really began back in the 40s and 50s and 60s, we also saw a huge movement uh, uh, in Christianity, uh, a lot of spiritual things. And I'm not saying that God doesn't do miracles and things like that. I certainly believe he does. But there's a lot of events that took place in, in Christian or, or quote unquote, quote unquote, Christian circles that clearly are uh, indicative of alien or fallen angel type of technology. Uh, I would hear things such as, you know, in, you know, the UFOs are investigating judgment angels. No, UFOs are part of the fallen angel phenomena. Uh, it, it, uh, it is, you know, you would hear about beams of light going up and down. You'd hear about orbs and, and lights and things of that nature there. We have an alien species that is like an orb. It's like an amber light, like a glowing ball. Uh, and they, they're, they, they're very religious. They, they pretend as if they, they put on a persona that they are really some kind of godly beings. But also, if you rub them the wrong way, you drop dead. So a lot of these things I'm going to disclose for you because, um, you know, I don't have that firsthand knowledge, but people that I have uh, had friendships with, I'll put it like that, uh, in different aspects of government are firsthand knowledge on a lot of this information. And so I'm able to share some of those things with you. Uh, so that's why I say we really look at the scripture. Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. That's the great deception that we know that is that is not only is coming, but has already been happening. It's been happening for, I would have to say, 6,000 years, not just 2,000 years, not just in modern times, but we know that. For example, if you look at the book of Jude, Jude says, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before, before old ordained to this condemnation. All right? They, they were they crept in unaware and it's amazing to me when we look at these things in scripture 
uh, and it, you know, <laughs> totally. We, we, I guess we don't really think of the depth of the word that is spoken of there. Um, literally, in the Greek language, it uses a word, paraisidunu, paraisidunu. Uh, I, I don't really know how to pronounce these Greek words. Greek is not the language for me. But it literally is to lodge stealth, stealth, uh, stealthily. All right. In other words, they literally were able to live among them, and yet no one knew who they really were. But what does what does Jude actually say about them? Okay, he said they were ordained to this. Con excuse me. He says they crept in unaware. In other words, they stealth stealthily lived in their presence, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation and godly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. Well, if they were before of old ordained to condemnation, the only ones that we know scripturally that were or for ordained to condemnation were the fallen angels that came and had sexual relationships with the women on the earth, brought forth children, and I can tell you, I read a lot of ancient documents, the Dead Sea Scrolls, many other ancient documents, and we actually have a document, just like in the uh, the uh, book of Genesis, that is from the Dead Sea Scrolls, it tells you about these falls, or about the fall. A lot of things that you even read in the book of Enoch is actually was in the original book of Genesis found in Qumran. Oh, Yes. Oh, yes, they have more in their Genesis than we have in ours. I mean, it's also identical to ours to some degree, but that's what's fascinating. You actually find out about the fall. And another thing that I found in studying these documents, you know, like the Dead Sea Scrolls, is that when the fallen angels came to the women, they didn't receive them at first. But then they transformed themselves to look as if they were their husbands. That's how they tricked them. These women didn't do anything willingly. They were tricked into it. And the odd thing is, in a recent discussion that I had with a good friend of mine in the Pentagon that, that has firsthand knowledge of the reptilian race, said that they are able to transform themselves to look as if they were human and they could look whoever they want to look like. And he had no idea that some of the ancient documents, like in the Dead Sea Scrolls, actually conveyed the same message. And then I was told, the reptilians, though, have no problem with uh, procreation. And they actually have genitalia exactly like humans do. Now, you think about that and then think about these fallen angels and then think about the fact that Jesus does what? What did Jesus say about them? Well, let's just, let's go to Genesis, excuse me, not Genesis, but to Matthew chapter 23, right? That's all you need to remember. And of course, John, John clearly stated the same thing. And everybody just thinks, oh, that's just allegoric. Well, is it allegoric? According to Matthew, uh, Matthew's gospel, the Hebrew versions that we have of the Matthew's gospel, it doesn't say you generation or you serpents, you generation of vipers. It literally says a family of vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? It was a bloodline. And then they had, my wife sends me this video. It was really funny. You know, uh, some family sent in the DNA, the saliva from their lizard. And they posted the video on YouTube and they said when they got the results back, it was 51% Ashkenazi Jew. Well, they make it look like in laughing off, uh, you and me, uh, I forget the name of that company, 23 You and Me, something like that, a DNA processing company that, that is just fraudulent. Well, it may not be that it's fraudulent, but we know according to the, to the book of Ezra, Right. And let's just go to it because 
people are going to share this video, especially it's going to be translated in multiple languages, right? About 11 different languages this message will be translated in. But we read here that the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands doing according to their abomination, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the Moabites, the Egyptians, and the Amorites. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, so that the Holy Seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands. They mingled their seed. Well, these peoples right here, the Canaanite, Hittites, Perizzites, Ammonites, etc., were all known to have mingled in with the fallen angels even after the flood and produced Nephilim, right? I think in the book of Numbers, if I remember right, let me see if I can find this uh, for you. Numbers, maybe it's chapter 13 here. Uh, yes, chapter 13, you have in your Bible, the King James Version, you have giants, but it's literally in the Hebrew language. And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, that's A-N-A-K, not Enoch, E-N-O-C-H, but A-N-A-K, Anak, who come of the Nephilim. Now they put here in the English transliteration Nephilim in both cases, but it doesn't say Nephilim in both cases. Nephilim is in the first one right here, as I've highlighted in blue for you. But Anak is from, in Hebrew it says, Min ha Nephilim. Nephilim. There's no Yod there in the Hebrew language. So he was literally born of a fallen angel after the flood. Okay? Jesus also, in Matthew 24, when you get down to around, I don't know, verse 30-something there. Um, I think verse, yeah, verse 36. He says, heaven and earth shall pass away, verse 35, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the son, coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered into the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took, all, took them all away. So, so, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now, a couple of things you need to notice here in Matthew 24 here. One, not even the angels of heaven knew when he would be coming, except his father only. I think those angels are not the father's angels, but the fallen angels. That's just my own uh, conjecture. I may be wrong. I'm just throwing that out there for you to think about. But he says it's going to be as it was in the days of Noah. They were eating and drinking. They were giving in marriage. They were marrying and giving, giving in marriage. But the thing is, is what were they eating? What were they drinking? And what type of marriages were they? Were they doing? Eating and drinking was cannibalism. Human flesh and blood. And I can tell you, we have thousands and thousands of children that go missing every year. Many of them end up on the tables of these ungodly beings, these fallen angels. The marrying and giving in marriage is again fallen angels cohabitating with the women on the earth, bringing forth a bastard race. So this is why all these things are very dangerous that's going on and, uh, and what we have to know about. So let me back up and I want to take you from the beginning here. So backing up here, as I said, I want to kind of give you a general idea of what we're going to see happen. 
based on Jesus's own words, when the apostles actually asked him after after going through the temple, seeing the temple and the buildings that were there on the Temple Mount, um, they asked him several questions about what was going to happen and what would be the end of the world, etc. We find that all here at the beginning part of Matthew chapter 24, right? And Jesus answers them. Uh, and he starts off by telling them there would not be one stone left upon another. Basically, that the temple would be destroyed. And then he goes on further down. And when you get into verse 4, this is what really gets the interesting part. Take heed that no man deceive you. Verse 5, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See, ye, see that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. All right, let me just stop right there for a moment. Many will come in his name saying, I am Christ. Literally, of course, as we know, the word Christ means anointed. I am the Mashiach. I am anointed. They come in the name of Jesus claiming that they're anointed, but they're going to do what? Deceive many. Remember what it says in 2, I believe that's Thessalonians chapter 2. That you be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Now, if you'll notice, I didn't highlight the next part, for that day shall not come, because it's italicized, meaning it's not actually written there. That's They wrote that in there, assuming that that's what it should be there. So let's read it the way it should be read. Let no man deceive you by any means, for except there come a falling away first, that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So there's going to be a great falling away. And not only that, then comes that one that's going to exalt himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, and he's going to sit in the temple of God. And as I've always said, the temple of God is not going to be the third temple in the Middle East, although they will build it. Nephtali Bennett will probably be the one that does it. That's supposed to be his main part of his tenure. And I know that Pentagon officials are actually saying that they fully expect that the third temple will be built this time around. I've never heard a Pentagon official say that before. But this is so that, that he sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. You know, when I discussed recently with a good friend of mine in Washington about AI, and I asked him about, well, you know, I said, Putin said whoever controls AI controls the world. I said, who controls AI? He said, the extraterrestrials control AI. I said, well, if they control AI, I said, then was Putin giving us a subliminal message? He didn't answer. And so I asked the next question was, I said, could it be that that thing that they're sticking in your arm, that they're saying is helping you with this so-called pandemic that's going on, could that be used in conjunction with AI to control the human beings? And I was told that they were not at liberty to speak about that subject. I said, okay, then let me ask you in another way. Am I on the right track? He said, yes, you are. 
So everything that we see happening in the world going on right now, the tensions, as I mentioned, in the Middle East, uh, not just the Middle East, but with Russia, with England, with the United States, with with China, with Taiwan, with Hong Kong, the United States, with Israel, and uh, of course, all the NATO allies with Iran and with Lebanon, Syria, uh, Iraq, uh, all these different players. These are all orchestrated events being controlled by the elitist, but yet ultimately controlled by these fallen angels, by these demons that are trying to gain complete control of the world. So when Jesus says over here in Matthew 24, nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Okay, that's the beginning of sorrows. So there is a time when we're going to see a uh, not only the nations rise up against one another, but we're going to hear about rumors of those things happening. Then we're going to have famines and pestilence, things that are manipulated by these fallen angels, just like the wars are manipulated. I've been told at some of the highest levels in government that the very players involved on the world stage, such as China, such as Russia, United States, etc., that they're all managed. They're not independently run. They do not, you, you know, like for example, Trump did not run the United States. He was managed by the elite. When there is a war or confrontation, it is a managed movement or action that's done by the elite, controlled by the fallen angels. But then we have the pestilence and the earthquakes in diverse places. They also have the ability to cause those to happen as well. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated in all nations for my name's sake. That'll be the true believers. Don't forget the majority of believers will be deceived because the scripture already said, many shall be deceived. Then we go on to read that says, and then shall many be offended and, and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. What many is that? That's the many that's going to be afflicted for the name of, for the sake of Jesus Christ. So many of them are going to be offended and they're going to betray one another. This pretend Christianity is going to end up being exposed when that time comes. Verse 11 says, And many false prophets shall rise and shall what? Deceive many. Remember in 2 Thessalonians, no, not 2 Thessalonians, 2 Corinthians, I believe it is, chapter 11. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And these so-called aliens, or fallen angels as they really are, are able to transform themselves as if they were the Son of God himself. And yet, so many people talk about, oh, I had a visitation. Jesus came to me. You know, have you tested that visitation by the word of God? Is it truly Jesus that came? For the scripture says, many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because the iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. I remember reading in the Hebrew, excuse me, yeah, the Hebrew Matthew says, and this gospel, and then he, he specifically took and then spoke it in the Greek, said this evangelium. The words that Jesus actually spoke 2,000 years ago. Not the corrupted, ungodly, uh, fallen angel influence of a bunch of preachers pretending to be Christians. We are coming, friends, to a time of deception like never before in your life. 
I see it all around us, even now. I see the messianic movement. I see a major move to put people under the law. I see a major movement for people to be placed back up underneath Israel. And no wonder in this website here, prepareforchange.net, Israel, the planned home of the new world order. Right? The implication Zionist Israel pretends to represent the Jewish people and their interests. However, it is inner core could care less about Jews. And what is Israel really about? Why does it receive so much money, support, and technology? Is it being primed to be the headquarters of the New World Order? That's a provocative statement. Yes, it is. And it's exactly what they're going to do. That's why they're going to build the third temple. They're making ready for the Antichrist. What's sad is that many Christians are going to fall for it. This is why there is such a movement saying that, well, Jesus was Jewish and you got to come back to the Jewish root. <laughs> what a deception. Jesus told you who the Pharisees and Sadducees were. He said they were of their father, the devil, and the works that, he, that, he, that they do are the, basically the same works as Satan. And you want to go follow that same line, that same pattern. I've taught too many times about the law. Proving to you what the scriptures has already proven to you in the book of Hebrews and many other places. We're in a late hour, friends. And the time for playing church is over. If you appreciate the work we're doing here and you want to support the work we do here, we appreciate your love and support, your help in doing so. And you can do so right here on our website, israelinewslive.org. Um, one other thing I'll mention to you as well, and the only reason I mention this is because something I didn't want to have to ever say publicly, but it's something that I need to put out there uh, because of a, getting into a serious situation myself physically. Um, in a recent, in a recent meeting with my doctor, he has told me that uh, the time for putting off the surgery that I need to have done has come to an end. I've got to stop putting it off. Uh, most of you probably have no clue that I have a severe spinal injury. I've had it for many years. And I've always put it off because I don't want to do surgery and I still don't want to even do it now. But my doctor has given me basically three months to do something about it because I don't feel my feet hardly at all any longer. And he's concerned that I have nerve damage that's irreversible at this point, which I believe Jesus can heal anything. Uh, but at any rate, financially, it is very expensive. I do not have insurance to cover things like that. And... Um, but I do understand what he's saying. It is something that is needful, it needs to be done. And I am getting to the point to where I realize I've got to do something very soon. So anyway, without going into any more details about that, if you want to help, um, uh, help in trying to uh, get that uh, achieved for us, uh, I greatly appreciate it because it's very difficult for me to walk at this point. I have a very difficult time getting around. It's been that way for years now, but, and, and the doctor's right. I know that it's getting really bad. Uh, and I do covet your prayers as well for that. Um, but you can, if you want to just, if you do it by mail to an institute, PO Box 156, Sunbright, Tennessee, 37872, you could put in the notes there that you want to do that to help uh, in the covering of the procedure that I have to have done. It is in the thousands, unfortunately. Uh, it's one reason why I've not done it also, because not having insurance, knowing that that is an extraordinary amount of money to have to cover. Um, but if God lays that on your heart, thank you. And you can also do it by clicking online. There is a way you can do it when you click online uh, to donate. You can actually put a note in there once you make a donation as well. So, and I don't know, let me just see if I were to do $5. Um, and let's just say I did it like that. Well, I don't know how to do that. So 
I was thinking maybe I'd show you how you could do that. But anyway, uh, we appreciate it. We thank you. God bless you. Uh, and those of you that are that are on Patreon or want to join Patreon, I'll put a, a link in the description for you below. Uh, because like I said, I want to really share a lot of that information with you. Uh, anyway, and I, by the way, I did turn the comments off on this video mainly because I'm dealing with those subjects that are very controversial. And there's a lot of people that just don't like it, even if I bring it out biblically. But I think we're in a serious hour, friends. And you need to know that as well. God bless you and thank you for listening.